Hello, my name is Cam Dahlquist, and I'm a professor of biology at Loyola Marymount University in Los Angeles, California. And today I'm going to tell you about new features for GreenSight, which is a web application for visualizing models of small to medium scale gene regulatory networks. LMU is a primarily undergraduate institution, and one of the motivations for myself and Dr. John David Genicio, my collaborator, uh, was to use GreenSight for an open science pedagogy where we teach our students about open source code, open data, open access, and open science, as well as research integrity, citizen science, and reproducible research. GreenSight is developed and used by undergraduates in courses and by our interdisciplinary research team where we have students that are collecting data in the wet lab, and we have students that are doing mathematical modeling, and then we have our uh, computer science team that is developing the visualization tool um, of GreenSight. And these students know each other and know that they're working together um, on this complete project. GreenSight was originally developed in 2014 as a companion software for GreenMap, which stands for Gene Regulatory Network Modeling and Parameter Estimation. And in this software, which is MATLAB software, we use differential equations to estimate weight parameters from DNA microarray data um, for small to medium scale gene regulatory networks. The first network that we used is shown in the lower left corner, and that diagram was drawn in Adobe Illustrator, um, which took quite a long time. So we were motivated to develop GreenSight in order to make that process of drawing small networks faster. So GreenSight rapidly generates uh, GRN graphs using our customizations to the open source D3 library. Besides the force graph layout, users can rearrange the nodes by hand or you choose the convenient block layout option. When model results are loaded, edge weight values are indicated by color, thickness, and end marker. So the regular arrowheads indicate activation and the blunt arrowheads indicate uh, repression and the red and blue colors um, indicate that as well. The numerical weight values from the model can also be displayed on the graph. The edge thicknesses are normalized to the largest magnitude weight value. In this case, the normalization factor is 5.21, which is the largest red arrow from SWI5 to ASH1. We can also modify that normalization factor to allow fair visual comparison between different graphs. So this is what it looks like with a normalization factor of 10 or of 2.5. Edges with the normalized weight values within 5% of zero are displayed as gray to minimize their visual strength. So this gray threshold is 5% but users can change the gray threshold with a slider. So here's 10% and 25%, 50%. Ed gray edges can also be shown as dashed lines to facilitate the visualization by colorblind users. So the threshold is back at 5% and now the gray edges are shown as dashed lines. The nodes can display the measured and or simulated expression data as individual heat maps. So you can see that there's two layers of stripes on each node. The top indicates the wild type microarray data from my lab and the bottom indicates the model simulated data from GreenMap. Right-clicking on a gene opens a new web page with information dynamically retrieved from source databases. Version four of GreenSight has been refactored to a model view controller paradigm and has resulted in taking 12 files down to six files and greatly simplifying the code. And new in version four beta, we now have data in a backend Postgres expression database um, that can be used to color nodes. So all of the previous slides were showing data um, from our demo files that was also um, from my lab, but now um, from our backend database, we worked with the Saccharomyces genome database um, to get data from other data sets. And so in this case, the top data set is from a paper by Kitagawa et al. in 2002, and the bottom data set is from Thorson et al. in 2007. Um, so I'd like to acknowledge my collaborator, John David Dionisio, and the students that have done the work, especially the fall 2017 and fall 2019 biological databases courses. And this is our URL uh, for the software and for our code repository. And we are also presenting a demo and a poster, so please come visit us at P506. Uh, thank you.